Hi folks and welcome back to the channel. If you don't know me, my name is Heather and you are here at Lemon Tree Corner. Welcome. Uh, this week in the studio we are going to be working on some more bags and using up our scraps. So, I don't know if you can see behind me, I've got Oh, these are heavy. So I've got these cute little Joann's containers with all of my big scraps. So this whole box is filled with scraps that are big enough to make the Maya wristlet pattern. So this is one of the patterns we're going to be doing with the larger scraps. And those are just scraps from many bags that I've been making over the past year. And the other one is teetering. There's so many of them. It's like two boxes worth that I have here. And now these are smaller pieces that we are going to be making the noodle head pencil pouch out of. I don't know if you can see that. So it's the noodle head pencil pouch, which is a really cute pattern that I've made before. And I've given this a B plus. It's just a B plus because it's kind of small and fiddly to work with because it's so small. I am going to add a little pull tab to this, which is not in the pattern, but I mean there's like four pattern pieces, so it's a pretty easy pattern, and we can just add a little tab onto that for the zipper. Oh! <laughs> As everything falls. Okay, apparently I can't lift that up without everything falling out. Okay. Oh, so here we have this huge pile. And let's see what we gave the Maya wristlet. The Maya wristlet got an A minus, which is very nice. I am going to add zipper tabs to this. It didn't have zipper tabs. It has, basically has a tail that comes off. But I didn't like the way it looked. It looked very unfinished. So I'm just going to do two zipper tabs and call it a day. I think it's going to look a lot more polished. I was going to just work on those in the background um, over the next few weeks, but these take up a lot of room. Obviously, it's a lot of scraps. So I figure let's just get them all cut out and made, and then I can kind of show you two easy patterns that you can make. The Maya wristlet's a little more involved. There's a front pocket with a snap, and we'll, we'll go into that. But I think the, the noodle head pencil pouch is one of the easiest patterns to make. It's a very friendly, beginner friendly pattern. So if you're thinking of getting into bag making, stay tuned because this will be the bag that you will want to start with. Okay, and other than that, we're just gonna keep cooking. Um, getting excited for my vacation coming up over spring break where we're going up to Central California. So I'll share that with you when we get there and I'll probably be taking that week off but I'll tell you more about that in future episodes. And I just want to thank you all for subscribing and joining. Most of the people who watch my videos are subscribed and that's quite a difference from other channels on YouTube. So I really appreciate you guys taking the time to hit the subscribe button and come back week after week. All oh, makes my little heart purr that you guys are here spending time with me in my studio. And if you, if you know of anybody else, we're trying to get to 500 subscribers right now. So if you know of anybody else who makes bags or is just interested in the process or likes to talk about crafty things, please go ahead and send them one of my videos, share one of my videos with them, and see if we can get them hooked on the channel. <laughs> And if you're interested in the Yarny content, I'll have more of that for you. It's kind of working out to one video a month, so I'll save up little clips and um, kind of do like a podcasty kind of thing with the, with the yarn stuff and give you more of an in-depth for that because with all these bags we're making, we just don't have time to go over the crochet stuff here. But I will share that with you in a separate video. Okay, so without further ado, Let's put these scraps to good use. Okay, we have got a lot going on here this week. So we've got our one scarf, which I still feel is a little too tight. So not sure about this one. I'm starting to work in the other color. 
So we'll see how big this one gets. And then I've got my scarf, which I started yesterday, which is already huge. So it's looking really pretty. I use that Bird Street yarn that we have gotten, and it's a big color change here. <laughs> but we're going into the other one. This is the fingering weight yarn that I ordered. And I ordered three of them, and I didn't know like what to do with them. So I'm kind of mixing them in different uh, mixtures to get like a nice striped scarf. I thought about doing smaller stripes, but I didn't want to do that. That scarf is this one, the double crochet two together ridge scarf. At least that's what I'm calling it. I can leave a link to the YouTube tutorial, which is an interesting guy, a tray you crochet. So he's doing some interesting stuff. And I watched quite a few of his videos this week looking for a pattern. Okay, right. so we have got our nice containers here of fabric. All our scraps put aside. Um, I do have this other this other pattern that I wanted to use with the scraps, which is the Lori Holt zippy bag. These small bags would be some nice notion bags. And I was thinking, you know, some of these uh, fabrics that I picked out for the project bags aren't really fabrics like this is a nice fabric that you would want to make a bag out of and this as well and I've got my lemony fabric here which is nice but then we get into the ones we made the bags out of which are a little a little bit specialized so I don't know if those are gonna make a nice wristlet they might be better for this zippy bag So we've got that we've got the tower, the leaning tower of fabric, oh, over here, this huge, this huge leaning tower of fabric that we're going to make the pencil pouches out of, I if there's like an easier way to do this, how about we split this up here, there we go, that's a little bit better, so I've already got the pattern pieces for that cut out, this pattern is a B plus and it's really just because it's so small. It's, it's kind of hard to work with. Um, and then I'm going to add a little loop here, like a little handle. It's not, it's just going to be big enough to like put your finger through. It's not going to be a wristlet strap or anything. But I feel like that's something that's missing on this one. So we're going to add that to that. But first, we are going to start with the Maya wristlet. So we've got this pattern. I still have to put the other pattern away. <laughs> I've been very lazy lately. So this is an A minus. I really liked the way this one turned out. I sold the only one that I made. So um, gotta make a new one and remember this pattern. But there weren't any pattern pieces. So we're doing what I think Rebecca suggested a while back. Maybe it was somebody else who suggested that they make pattern pieces when there's only dimensions listed. So I went ahead and made all these pattern pieces. It's a lot of pattern pieces for this little wristlet. But um, there's a lot of moving parts here. We've got this cool snap pocket in the front that's like a cell phone pocket. Although with the size of cell phones these days, I don't know that it fits in here, but it easily fits in the inner pocket. But we have a little fashion snap here that we get to use our rivet machine for. I'll show you that. And then we've got a little pieced panel in the back here. And then we've got this cool, I don't know if you can see it there, a uh, credit card slot kind of pocket on the inside. So that's fun. So we have to piece, like I have a lot of pieces just for this front pocket. And we're using a little Decoville in here. And then we're gonna sew it and fold it so that it has like this little lip. And that's where we're gonna put the snap. I think I'm mostly gonna focus on this one to show you some goodies here and yeah I think it's a really it's a nice wristlet because it's got everything it needs um, including the credit card slot so you don't need to carry around a wallet but yeah I mean look at this cut list this is a lot of stuff so <coughs> oh and I apparently use fusible fleece it's a good thing I wrote that down so what we are gonna do uh, I cut out the first one already 
and I'm going to have to add the fusible fleece, but I wanted to use the leftovers from that Alice in Wonderland fabric we had to make a little pouch for my YouTuber Morgan. Love her. Um, and I think she has the Rifle Paper Company cover of this for Alice in Wonderland. There's a, like a penguin book that has this fabric as the cover. So I wanted to make this for her. I was going to make her a pencil pouch because she's an artist and I figured she could carry around uh, stuff with that. But I forgot and I made the, I made the Myris that I cut this out already beforehand. I mean, maybe I can make a pencil pouch out of this as well. I, I seem to have quite a bit of leftovers. I don't know that... I don't know. Yeah, this piece might be big enough for the pencil pouch. Yeah, maybe we can make both. I'll figure out which one I want to give her. Because I totally cut this out first and then forgot I wanted to make a pencil pouch for her. So, so this is what we're going to work on today. Unfortunately, I didn't have a piece that was long enough this way because this is going to be our credit card slot. We're going to do like, you know, all the all the little slot pieces out of this, but this is going to be sideways, which is kind of annoying because I didn't have a long enough piece to go vertical, and this is a directional fabric, so it is what it is. So let's get started on this. I guess I'm eating lunch first because the oven just went off. So we get to do something a little unique with this uh, wristlet strap, which is actually my favorite way to do the wristlet strap. See if I can get the strap in the shot there. Um, we are gonna put we're gonna put the swivel hook on. If I can get it on. It's so small. Okay, right, so we're gonna put the swivel hook on, and then here comes the magic. We're gonna take these clips off. So before we sew all this together, we're gonna sew the ends together fancy so that we have one continuous loop which is very cool so problem here is getting this nice and flat Let's see if you can see it here so we're gonna sew this together back stitch Cut off that long tail. No place in my project. Okay. Now, you can take this to the iron, but at this point it's just easier to do it this way. We are going to just fold that back, finger press it, and then we're going to refold these creases back in here until we get back to that shape we had going on. Okay. And since our thing is on the edge here, what we're going to do is we are going to flip it so that the clean edge is on the outside where this thing is actually going to sit. We're also going to start sewing in a space that's not right on top of that, um, this join, because this join is going to be thicker. So we're just going to do our nice top stitching. You know, like reposition this the whole time we're going. So we'll just get this nice and positioned, go around. And then stop and reposition it as we get to this weird thick point here and go nice and slow over that ridge. Okay. Reposition. And then when we get close to the swivel clip, we're just going to be moving this out of the way the whole time. So we're going to be continually moving that swivel clip out of the way as we go around the whole thing. Now we're back to the beginning. Close that off, and then we got to do it the other way around. So you kind of want to make these joins 
don't know if they have to make it in the same place, but it's good if you can get it somewhere near the ridge so that we can hide those a little bit. All right, and we're gonna cut all our little tails off here. Cut that, cut that, clean everything up. Why these scissors don't want to cooperate with me anymore? Cut these guys off. Okay. And then we're going to flip it so it's right side out. We're going to get this swivel clip on one side of our tab. So we've got our little ridge here. So we are going to go on one side of the ridge, pretty close to the ridge. And then where we're going to put our stitching is going to be pretty close to that ridge as well. So we're going to kind of hide it, have all that stuff in one place. And we're going to go back and forth several times because this is going to get the brunt of the weight here from our bag. Our bag full of goodies. And there we have it. Cut off our little tails. Okay, and there we have our nice wristlet strap. I really like sewing it in a loop like that because it just makes a nice clean strap. And then we can work on that front pocket. The front pocket's probably the most complicated thing. There is a video, um, Oakler Roots did a video, so I'll link to that. And yeah, so the way she shows it in the video is very clear, very well done. So we're just gonna go with that. The zipper we are using <laughs> that's too funny. I had already set aside the hardware and then forgot that I had it out here. I do need to order more half inch hardware. The zipper we are going to use is the same zipper we used for the other bag because I bought it specifically for this. It's a little orange, but these pieces in here are actually orange. They're not red, so it's a little deceiving, but they are actually orange. So. These are our pocket pieces. And we're gonna wait and attach this, I think, after we assemble the pocket. Okay, so the way she had us put the Decoville is very specific, so pay attention to that. Don't just fuse it on. We wanna fuse it in this bottom right corner. We're gonna take this end with the Decoville and we're gonna put it that direction. And then we're going to line this up with the edge with the Decoville. And sew this down at 3 8 of an inch. Now the weird part about this is we're going to flip this over. We're going to line up these two edges. And then we're just going to press backwards. And what we're going to wind up with is this overlap right here. So we can press this down, take this over the iron, press it down, and we're now going to stitch in the ditch right here. And then this is where we're going to put our snap. Okay. And Eventually, we're going to attach it to this piece, like so. And then we're going to line this up to put our snap in. So let me go get my accoutrement. And this is when having a rivet press comes in handy. Okay, so we've got our fashion snaps, which have four pieces and are very confusing. So, I usually have to watch the video tutorial again every time I do this because I do this so few and far between. So I basically have to line up each piece. Get that out of the way. We're gonna line up each individual piece here. And then each of these pieces has a die that goes with it. We just need one of each. Put all these back together, keep them all organized. And then 
basically have to go watch the video to figure out which die goes with which piece. I got four, four dies there. Let's go watch the video. So we're going to go three inches down from the top, which is going to be on this side, three inches down. And we're going to mark that. We're going to have to cut a hole anyway, so might as well go ahead and mark that now. So three inches down from the top and centered here where the other piece, although we'll be smart, we'll cut this one first and put the snap in and then we'll line it up on the other piece. It's just going to be easier that way. Okay, so right now I'm just going to punch my hole since I have my hole puncher in here. And I'm just going to poke that through, make sure I got a nice hole there. I'm going to take out these die, and then I'm going to look at the video and line these up correctly. Okay, so on the official Cam Snaps website, we have this one goes with the cap because it fits in there perfectly. And this is the piece we want on the very outside of our pocket. So we want this pretty, ah, we want the pretty cap showing on the outside. So that's what we're going to do there. And then the other piece of this that goes with this is the pocket. So the little female end of the snap and that goes with which one does that go with I think it goes with this one no I can never tell which one that goes with does it go here oh I think it goes this way because this piece has to go in like that all right let me look at the video again so I think these both go with that one. So I think it is this one. And we're gonna be upside down there. That's the only one that looks like it would fit. We're gonna screw that one in. We're gonna lay our pretty side down there. Get this piece lined up here. And make sure it's the right way around because that would be the worst to have that be the wrong way in there. I'm just going to line them up on the fabric because it's not going to do it that way. Oh. Then we're going to Scrunch them together, and there we have our snap. Yay! And then we're going to line up these pieces. And then we're going to need to mark where this one goes. So I'm just going to lift this up here. I'm going to put a mark directly underneath where that one goes, so. You can even snap that together. Make sure, mine's a little off. Make sure that's right there in the middle. Gotta get our piece back now. I don't wanna attach to that. Okay, so we're going to take those two dies out. I'm going to put our hole punch thing back in to punch a hole in this piece. It's so difficult. Okay, and I'm going to punch a hole in that bottom one <sighs> was more in line with what we wanted there. Just make sure 
the hole is actually showing. Take these two out again. And then I gotta watch the video <laughs> to see where these ones go. Okay. Okay, on this one we're gonna put the pointy end on the bottom. Actually, you can tell which one goes on the bottom because one has the screw and one doesn't. That was my first clue. And this one with the weird spring thing goes on the top. And then we're going to put the pointy post on the bottom, put our fabric through, and put our male end of the snap inside. And press down. And that's it. So we should line up here. I want to go ahead and snap it in place before you sew this end so that you know if there's any overhang or anything that's all going to get incorporated into the seam allowance so I, I mine's a little taller over here the lining fabric's a little shorter over here but the important thing is that the snap snaps together so we don't want to lose that we want to keep that snapped so basically what we're going to do is we're going to put a zipper in there and then we're going to piece all of that together and we need an 8 inch long zipper I'm basically gonna just eyeball it like this I tend to not believe people when they give me zipper lengths because they're generally in regular zipper length and not my zipper tape so just to be safe Who am I to say you walk the wall? When all I did was fight so hard, I forgot what I was fighting for. Who am I to say those breaking down? Who am I? Let's go to our lining panels. So this is just going to be the one lining panel that is normal. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to piece this together and make a card slot with all of these things so you can see how that will piece together when we sew it. So first of all, we need to make all the folds for the card slot. Maybe someday I'll wait for it, someday I'll look past all so like that it's all accordion only problem is my piece is obviously going the wrong direction we will ignore that and now what we're gonna do is take this to the sewing machine we're gonna top edge top sew top stitch on each of these uh, top edges of the pockets just to give it a nice finish and make them stand out a little bit better even though we're about to sew these onto the end. I won't be able to see these. I think I'm just going to base these down real quick. That's just going to stop these from unnecessarily moving around on me when we do this. Okay, so now we're going to clip these to the sides and sew these down. And here we have our finished panel. So I'm obviously not going to show you a real part of mine. But you can you you get the idea. So the cards would fit into these pockets. So you've got three pockets, but you can if they're wide enough. You can obviously fit like three or four cards in each of those pockets. And here is our finished bag. Yay! So very cute. It's got the pocket in the back, and then the little phone pocket, which does actually fit my phone, which I was very surprised. And I can snap it which is good and then we've got our little wristlet strap I need to order more of these I only have a few more of these um, half inch hardware left and then our little card slots I forgot that this last card slot is kinda weird because it's on the curve so maybe I will change the dimensions of that because you can't really use that card slot if it's on the curve here when we box the bottoms. And here's our teeny weeny box bottoms <laughs> there. So 
That's very interesting. Never seen such small boxed bottoms before. Yeah, but very cute. I also like that the, the lining fabric is on the outside because we want to feature this one panel and then we could use our brighter fabric on the inside, which I've seen other bag makers do. I just normally don't have the self-restraint to put the pretty fabric on the inside, but I think this works out very well in this style. So, yay! So next we are moving on to the noodle head. And for this one, we can do an accent. It's meant to be a canvas pouch, but you can make it with anything. I just add in some, um, I just add in some fusible fleece to just give it some oomph. And it's fat quarter friendly, so it really doesn't take a lot of pieces. Uh, sometimes I use the lining fabric as this accent fabric on the outside, so it depends how much lining fabric I have. Um, I wouldn't really want to use cork or anything, but denim or canvas would be a good choice for that piece. So it looks like we've got plenty left of our lining fabric. So here we have our accent piece. So we would need one, well, two of those, um, two of the main, and then two of the lining. And I just like doing it like this so that I can cut out, um, you know me. I don't like things on folds, <laughs> so we're doing it that way. So yeah, I've got plenty of fabric here. We're also gonna make a little finger loop. Um, I have to look at my other pattern and see how big the finger loop is on those squishy bags. But I think, I think that's even probably bigger than I need. I probably just need like a two by six to just make it like a half inch wide little handle that you could loop your finger through. So we'll do that. Um, I don't know which fabric. It would probably look better in the this fabric because it's going to be on this side where the zipper pull is. It's going to be right there. So I don't know if I want the contrasting fabric or matching fabric. Hmm. So you really get away with um, a lot less fabric for something like this. This is my go-to for my scraps because it is such a small amount of fabric. I mean, I could pretty much get two of these out of this if we go this way. Kelly mentioned in the video last week, what is that tape stuff that I used on the zipper? So I'll walk you through how to use this wonderful thing. It's Dritz Wash Away Wonder Tape, and it just really helps you place your zippers and keep them even. Yeah, it's a really, a really good tool. It's kind of pricey, but like if you have a to put in a zipper on a curve or it's just something you don't want to think about, like when I do the zipper pockets and I have to cut out the hole and put the zipper in there, it just helps me place it so much nicer that it's just worth the money. They're not like that expensive, but you can go through this pretty fast if you use it for every single time. You place a zipper, but it's really good for certain situations. And then if you're a beginner, it's just wonderful. It really helps you put zippers in fast and easy without being panicky about it. Because <laughs> some people really get panicky about zippers. But okay, let's go get this iron. Who are you to say you changed your mind? So if you are new to bag making or considering making a bag, this is the easiest pattern you're going to find. Uh, it's a little small. I mean, you could make the whole thing bigger if you wanted to blow up the pattern pieces. Um, but they're, they're just really cute. They're good presents for people as well. So uh, any children you have in the family, perfect for any artists, perfect for... Uh, they can hold makeup too. They don't have to hold just pencils. So you've got that going for you. And basically, I mean, look how short this pattern is. Basically what we're doing is cutting out the pieces. We're making a zipper. I'm going to put two zipper tabs on it. 
So we're going to do our usual zipper and we're going to sew these pieces together. So what we're going to do next is we're going to take these pieces and sew these together to make one long piece. Then we're going to stick our fleece on it and then it's just our usual zipper assembly. We attach the zipper to the top, we put a hole in the lining, we box the corners. You don't even really have to box the corners if you don't want to, but I mean that's it. That's the whole pattern. So very, very easy and yeah, it's a good way to practice with cutting out a pattern and sewing together a pattern and you don't even have to use the fleece if you don't want to. I just like the extra oomph that it gives. But you could do it with um, quilting batting if you wanted to, if you have that around. Or you could just do, do it like this with the SF-101 and have it be a little, a little floppy, which isn't that big of a deal. And we got our second bag here with our other two pieces. And what I also like about using the scraps is the assembly line-ness, the assembly line nature of this bag. Um, just cutting out two bags at once made it go a lot quicker than cutting out all the interfacing pieces. So what I'm going to do next, I'm basically just doing it this way for you guys, um, just so that we have everything in one video. But what I'm going to do after I make this bag is I'm going to go through all the spare fabric we have, all the scraps, and cut out all the pieces and make sure I have a zipper for all the pieces, you know, that match everything. Cut everything out at once, and then that's really the assembly line process. Okay, so now we have our pieces, and we're going to iron our fleece onto the back. So I just made the fleece the same size because I don't really care if it's in the seam allowance or not. Um, this looks to be a little bit too long. So what I will do is I'll iron it to the side and then we'll cut off any extra we have once we iron them on. Just so that we have a nice clean edge all the way around. For the reasons and wrong turns I Okay, so all I did was I tacked our little handle down. Now I don't know how long I want to make these. This is an experiment. So we're going to do these two first. A little longer than I think they need to be, just so that once we sew them together I can see if it's too long or if it's just right. So we got that. Okay, so now we are going to do our zippers. Okay, so this is going to go with this because it matches the zipper tab. So now what you can do is three different ways. You can clip this, base this down at an eighth of an inch, then put your lining piece on and sew that right on top at a quarter of an inch. You can sandwich them all and feel lucky and put them all on at once so you would you like you've seen me do before and I do this a lot in a straight line I tend to use the wash away tape on things like those zip pockets that have the big hole that we have to put on but you've seen me do this a lot which is I clip it to the other side first and then I incorporate the lining into the clip and do it that way. If you're not confident with that, there is a totally different way that you can do this, which is to use the wash away tape. So, in this case, what we can do, and you don't have to put the wash away tape along the whole thing if you don't want to. You want to put this close to the edge as possible. If you're using a number three zipper, this is going to be difficult to get close to the edge. And that's the whole point of the wash away tape, is that 
um, if it is, if it does show up in the seam allowance, in the end, you can rub it away, wash it away, squirt it with water, rub it off, and it will come off. So that's the joy of the wash away tape, is it's like your little helping hand friend that's going to help you get this zipper in, but it's not going to be visible. In the end, you can sew over it. It's not gonna mess up your. Um, it's not gonna mess up your needle at all. It's not gonna gunk it up. Okay, so you know the hardest thing for me is getting this apart. It doesn't like to stick to the zipper. Okay, so it's basically just double-sided tape, but because it's wash-away tape, it's gonna be a lot easier in the end. So I am just gonna eyeball center that there so that I have enough room on the ends for uh, to sew the whole thing together. So tape on one side, tape on the other side, and then I'm just going to line up my lining on this side right alongside of it and boom! No clips, no double sewing. If you don't feel confident, you have to double sew these things. So no double sewing. And then we're just gonna take it to the sewing machine and sew it down. You'll notice that my lining's a little bit hanging over the edge, but that's okay. And voila! Okay, so if we had a thinner zipper tape, you might see a little bit of that uh, Wonder Tape sticking out here in which case you can spray it with a little bit of water and rub it off and it'll come right off. So just a nice tool that's gonna help us with our bag. So I'll go back to my regular way now that I've demonstrated that. poke out these tabs. Oh boy, that one's in there. All right. Yay. So very cute. This might be a little too long, but you know, it's obviously something you're going to be able to loop your finger in and carry it around. It's also something that when you go to open your bag, you can hold on to this little tab, which will help you open your bag. So that's cute. We got our cats on there. You can clearly see the cats. And we're just going to sew up the hole in our lining. And we're going to be all done. So I think that's it for the actual making of the bags. So I've shown you what each of these ones looks like. And then I'm just going to spend the rest of the week putting together as many bags as I can. Um, this is also just something I'm sure I'm going to be doing in the background of the next couple of weeks. Okay, so I've made a huge mess here. <laughs> I'm trying to pair up zippers with each of these um, pouches. So we're making the pencil pouches out of all of these scraps. And I'm just trying to pair up the zippers that I have. I went through and looked at my notes on what zippers I used for the original bags. I'm trying to stick with those where I can, but uh, for some of them I don't have the zippers anymore, like the pale pink with the gold I no longer have. I just have a little bit of this mustard one. Uh, so yeah, really trying to make a list of zippers that I need to order. I also need to order more of the half inch hardware for the other, the Maya wristlets that I'm making. So I'm just making a big list of things that I need to order. I get all my zippers from my handmade zipper, uh, which is a really good company. They also, besides having all of these zippers and loads of options for zipper pulls that you can order with them, they also have fabric sometimes. They have hardware. Um, I tend to get my hardware from Emmeline Hardware when I can, but they're in Canada and there's a uh, customs fee to get anything shipped from Canada and it's kind of pricey. 
So I tend to make a big order to make it worth the shipping. The other hard part about this is getting it all back in the box with all these zippers. So I think what I'm going to do, because um, I obviously can't cut anything with all this stuff laying around, so I think what I'm going to do is just use this bottom, this bottom part of my, um, bottom part of my cutting board to cut the zipper now that we know it needs to be 10 inches for these. I will just cut the zippers and put them with, put them with the um, bag that I'm making and just kind of stack them all that way. If I'm smart, I would also put the zipper pulls on at this point. Um, we were going to experiment with the... Okay, now I've made a mess and you can't see anything. Okay, so here are our three bags that we just did the regular zipper pulls with. And I've got all this suede cording in lots of different colors that I ordered or I got from Daiso. So I'm just going to kind of hold these up. I don't really have a blue that goes with that. There is orange in here, but it's definitely not that orange. That's not going to go with anything. And there's a little stripe of pink in here, but I'm thinking the, yeah, the pink's not going to go with the orange. So we probably won't do one for this one. Um, now these two I can definitely do. I've got pinks and purples and so that should go nicely with that. <laughs> this is difficult because I don't like have the exact color that's going to match with this. I do have black. I could put a black one in because that would tie in with the black cats. Maybe we'll go with that. That might be nice. You know me, I gotta put them back in rainbow order. And uh, I have a Daiso down the street from me, so I can go get more of these if I need to. I obviously don't have a lot of blues. Um, so that color, I don't really have that color. This is kind of close, that might work. Or I should just do black for both of those. So let's try that. I do have my beads, the problem is, in order to find beads with a large enough hole that the that the suede is going to go through, they're just like kind of big beads. So I don't know if I want beads that big that we're going to be able to tie them on. So I just I'm obviously going to waste some of this, but I just want it long enough then I can actually tie it. Now the problem is, is both of these pieces have to go through this bead. So the question is, does the bead look good or does it look totally 70s? That's the question. Um, yeah. I'm not sure. Let's go with a lighter bead. I think the color's throwing me off there. It's kind of this light Beige is already in the pattern. And then of course, <laughs> there's like a little bit of debris inside the bead. So, <clears throat> I don't know. I saw this on somebody's Instagram, another bag maker who does this with her pouches. And I thought, oh, that's such a cute idea. I really like that, but you know. Is it me? Is it really the style I want to have with the bags? I mean, it's cute, and it definitely helps you pull pull the bag shut. Okay, I will put it on these two and see how I feel about it. I'm not sure about it for the rest of them, but comment down below. Do you like the bead? Let me know what you think about the bead. Hey friends, so we have come to the end of another week and we have three bags to show for our work. Yay! 
Yay! So we've got our uh, my wristlet, which is super cute with this front pocket, and our card slots on the inside. So really like this pattern. Cute wristlet. Even has a pocket in the back. So that one's fun. And then we did two, two of the noodle head uh, pencil pouches. So we've got these two. Only difference really is the zipper and then the tab is different. And we put our little beads on the zippers. So let me know if you like that look or not. Um, thinking of doing this with the rest of the ones that we made or we are making, <laughs> so we can do that for them. So I've got a moi, I've got a bunch of those bags cut out right here on our board. So I'll be working on those in the background over the next couple of weeks and getting those ready for us. And then we have a fun new pattern for us for next week. So we'll go into that next week and just hope you're having a wonderful week. Thank you for coming here and spending time with me. I really appreciate it. And happy St. Patrick's Day. Okay. Love you. Bye. Mm -hmm.